Okay, this time powers with a non-zero base cannot be zero or less. A power with a non-zero base cannot be zero or less. Now, a typical example of that is, is exponential uh, functions. In other words, where my unknown is in the exponent. Now, what I mean by that is that this, this exponent, that x, can take on any number. You can put any number in the exponent. The domain is x may be anything. But your output is limited. Because this whole thing, that is a power, a base, and an exponent is a power. And we said that a power with a non-zero base, we see the base is the 2, <coughs> cannot be 0 or less. In other words, 2 to the power of x will always be larger than 0. 2 to the power of x will always be larger than 0. I can't get it negative because 2 is multiplied by itself x times. By itself. Itself is positive. Which means that it's a positive times a positive. It will always be positive. Okay. It might be less than 1, it might be a fraction. If x is negative, it will become a fraction. Okay. But it will never be less than 0, or even equal to 0. Two, no matter how many times or what value x takes, 2 to the power of that x can never equal 0. Which means in this case, that is my output. 2 to the power of x is how I calculate my output. So my output will always be bigger than 0. If I were to write this in my bracket notation, um, I could say y is an element of open bracket 0 all the way to infinity. Also open bracket. It's because 0 is not included and neither is positive infinity, y is anywhere between 0 and that positive infinity. Okay, let's look at one more. How about if I have something like, okay, fx is equal to 3 to the power negative x plus 1. Okay, again, for range, we notice that, oh, okay, my power with a non-zero base, that can never be zero. So that power can never be zero. So 3 to the power negative x. This negative doesn't change anything in terms of the range. This power can still not be zero or less than zero, so it will always be bigger than zero. It's not how I get my output though. I must still, after I've put the x into the exponent there, I must still add a one. So on both sides I add a one and I see zero plus one is a one and I see that y is therefore greater than one and how we will write that in bracket notation will be like this. I've done quite a few examples now, so to save your time, uh, pause it if you're not sure, but to save your time I'm not going to explain every step. Okay, how about if I have my fx is equal to negative, um, let's make it 7x um, plus 1 minus 3. Okay, in this example we see my base and exponent, my base and exponent can never be less than, oh sorry, must be bigger than zero. What that means is that my base and my exponent is 7x plus 1. 7x plus 1. You might ask, no, no, what about the negative? Isn't this negative part of the base? No, it is not. If it was part of the base, it had to be in brackets to show that it is part. If it's not in brackets, it actually means that there's a little 1 in front there. So it's negative 1 times 7. So it's not part of the base, and it does change it. You'll see uh, why in just a minute. So I've got that, that this will always be positive, always be positive. So if I multiply it with a negative 1 on both sides, it must always be negative. So negative 7x plus 
1. Because I'm multiplying with a negative, my sign changes around. So now negative that must now always be negative. And I'm not finished. Not only must it always be negative, I must also add a 3. Uh, sorry, not add a 3, I think it's subtract a 3. Yes, subtract a 3. Which means I must subtract it on both sides. So 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So this is how I get my output. And that must be less than negative 3. So to write that in my bracket notation, y is an element, it's less than negative 3, which means it goes all the way up to negative infinity, not included. And it goes up to 3, and 3 is also not included. It would have been included if there was an equal sign, but as we said, it does not include 0 and therefore not negative 3. And there we go, that's what we did about the range and what is the range? Remember the range are the possible values that I can get with a certain function. So for this one y can take any value between negative infinity and negative 3. So what that also means is that in this function I will never be able to get the value 0 for example no matter what I put in for x because 0 is not included in my range. It would be impossible for me to get that value by substituting some value for x. Well, I hope you got it. Um, that concludes domain and range, and you can do some examples right now. Good luck.